Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, December 7th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Francisco, California. In Diaries today, we do have a quick write-up by one of our undergraduate interns, Brock Perry, is writing about, well, one of those ubiquitous uh, IoT uh, router, whatever you want to call it, attacks that are calmly attributed to the Gavgit and Mirai botnets. Hard to actually tell the two apart these days uh, with uh, them sort of borrowing features from each other and lots and lots of sort of uh, various hybrid uh, malware like this evolving. And also the next episode of Packet Tuesday is out and available for you if you're interested in it. This time I'm talking about TLS and I'm taking a client hello packet apart. Well, have you ever deployed sort of a JavaScript library on your website, maybe to track users, some free open source uh, stuff, but then kind of... Uh, lost interest in really looking at all the stats and so you really just forgot about it apparently uh, that's something that happened uh, to users of the free uh, javascript library cockpit cockpit uh, has been discontinued in december 2014 and recently a group re-registered a domain name used by cockpit the domain name web-cockpit.jp was then used to serve a malicious JavaScript, very much sort of what we know commonly as MageCard group in that this JavaScript was then used to collect keystrokes on websites that still were loading that now defunct for multiple years, a tracking a script. Apparently, a 40 different e-commerce sites were compromised or data from those websites was compromised via this malicious script. Overall, very, very similar to a mage card. The only difference here is that this particular attack group didn't actually have to compromise a website in order to install their malicious script. They just re-registered that expired uh, domain. On this podcast, I often mention vulnerabilities in home routers. Well, just earlier we had the story with the Mirai and Gakfi botnet. Turns out that apparently not all vulnerabilities that are sort of being disclosed in these devices are actually real. There is an interesting blog post by Jacob Bynes on Volncheck that talks about a vulnerability that was disclosed via GitHub in April. Actually, four different vulnerabilities here. Three of them actually got a CVE number. And uh, well, it turns out that uh, they were apparently just uh, made up. But what makes the story even more interesting is that Mubot, uh, one of uh, the uh, many IoT bots that's sort of going around, apparently used that fake vulnerability. So the Mubot authors, uh, like uh, many others probably, read that that uh, GitHub uh, entry, they used the proof of concept that was posted as part of that GitHub entry just uh, blindly uh, to hopefully execute malicious code and uh, then included that particular attack string in their uh, bot. Now, since this was now seen in the wild, and this may be something that uh, we may even have seen in our honeypots, uh, it was considered an exploit that's actually in use in the wild and made it into CISA's known exploited vulnerabilities uh, list, which sort of even gave it more weight and uh, in some ways uh, more credibility as being possibly a real vulnerability. A patch was never really released for this fake vulnerability because the affected router here, uh, dealing dir 816 L had uh, since then been already end of life, so uh, no more support. And with that, of course, also no real statement from dealing whether or not this particular vulnerability was actually uh, valid. Well, uh, interesting case here. I don't think it's really helpful for people uh, to publish uh, these fake vulnerabilities. Keeping your router up to date is probably still a good idea. And talking about some real vulnerabilities, well, in this case, they come straight from the vendor. Uh, Google released updates for 
Android and one of the more interesting monopolies here also Google points out the most critical one in this update is a remote code execution vulnerability that's apparently exploitable via Bluetooth. No additional details so far and also nothing about any exploits or so available uh, for this vulnerability. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.